Welcome to the weekly uh, chat session with uh, Tom Baudet. And I'm Tom Baudet. <laughs> the, uh, this week we're going to be discussing uh, the proper setting of the shed on both a uh, counterbalance loom and a jack loom. Uh, very, uh, very simple actually, but very important. Uh, because when weaving, we want to be sure that the shed opens properly, top and bottom, so that when the shuttle goes through, it doesn't pick up, uh, warp in from the bottom shed, uh, or go over, uh, warp in from the top shed that cause uh, floats in the fabric. Now most all looms uh, have one or more uh, places where we can set the uh, level of the of the uh, beater with respect to the uh, pedal uh, in the sheds. Now, first, we'll talk about the counterbalance loom, and this is a counterbalance loom, and uh, often referred to as a center shed loom, where when the shed opens, uh, it opens from a center point where the bottom shed will go down and the top shed will go up, forming the shed. It's referred to as a counterbalance loom because all the shafts are tied in pairs. And it's a direct tie uh, type loom uh, under power. So when you step on the treadle in the pairs, one shaft is going to go down and its mate is going to come up. And as you can see, <coughs> The first two uh, and the second two are tied in pairs over these uh, 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 upper uh, rolls. Now the way you set a counterbalance loom, uh, Lee, if you'll cite down the profile, the side profile, <coughs> you'll notice in referring to the, uh, the, the center shed, it's really not in the center, but relative to where that uh, shed went open, the bottom shed will be kissing the uh, either the bottom of the reed or the race plate, one or the other. Most counterbalance looms of the older type do not have a race on them, which is not important uh, in this type of a loom. But uh, it is important that we open that shed so that the bottom shed just kisses the, the, the bottom of the reed. And in so doing, you can see the bottom shed here on this loom is, is touching the bottom. And then when we raise it, you can see the bottom shed touching the bottom and the top shed going up, allowing for the shuttle to go through. Now, there are various ways to set this shed. Uh, some looms have numerous uh, ways, others do not. This is a Leclerc loom, and we can actually set the height of the, the reed with respect to the shuttle by the lower adjustments on the lay saws. Or in some cases, we have slots in the back of the, of the, uh, the lay saw itself that we can raise the beater slay or lower it. Uh, or we can adjust the height of the uh, uh, shafts themselves through these uh, roller cords and this adjustment on the side. So Leclerc provides numerous ways that you can fine tune uh, the shed with respect to what you want to start with. Now, it's not important that we have a lot of ways to, to adjust this sh the, the shed, but it is important that the, the way the uh, loom manufacturer offered to set it, uh, we follow. So with that, so then I'm going to demonstrate that here, uh, with our center shed, you'll notice that when I open that shed, the bottom shed is kissing this this bottom of the reed, and the top shed is open. Now, you hear uh, many many uh, weavers uh, talk about how wide they can open a shed. The opening of the shed is not as important as the evenness of the shed side to side. Uh, you want to be sure that all of your warp ends are, are kissing 
uh, on the bottom or kissing this raised plate uh, or the bottom of the reed. And that the top, in many cases, uh, they won't be all perfectly even, but the lowest of the top shed, uh, allowing the shuttle to go through, is most important. Now, you want to open that shed uh, actually only sufficient to uh, pass the, the, the size of the shuttle that you are using for that particular fabric. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do any good to open the shed too wide or wider than necessary because all you're doing is stretching the yarn. And of course, uh, the more the wider you open, the more stress you're putting on that yarn, and uh, that can at times cause problems. So you want to set the shed so that the bottom of the of the of the uh, shed itself either kisses the, the bottom of the reed or the raised plate, and the top of the shed is high enough to allow whatever shuttle you're using to go through cleanly. Okay. Now the most common way. Uh, to set the shed on a on a counterbalance loom is with the length of the treadle cords on uh, on this type of loom. Now the 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 remainder of the settings are usually set once the loom the, the loom itself has been fine tuned uh, by the weaver as far as the the uh, length of the cords, the height of the shed. I mean the height of the sh uh, shafts and so forth, uh, that, that usually stays uh, permanent and then you change the opening of the shed by the length of the treadle cord that you're going to use. So to, to, uh, to go over one more time, the opening of the shed is most important so that we have a, uh, a, a, an error-free or a defect-free fabric, which is what the goal is. Okay, we'll talk next about the jack loom.